Okay, it's finally warmed up here in South Dakota to a 19 degrees and I thought I'd do this video on this car. I'm going to try to get going here, see. So this is a 60 Corvair and I bought it, let's see, last run 1991, that's when it was last tagged and I believe that's probably right. So I used to have a 60 many years ago that I restored and I thought how cool would it be to get another one because this one I got for next to nothing. I pulled it out of a field near Topeka, south of Topeka, Kansas. So it's uh, not a barn find, it's a field find. And anyway, I had so much, it's been sitting here right where you see it for three years and I had such trouble trying to get a title and I just found out I just found out how to get a title for a car that's not titled so I'm waiting on that so now I'm thinking you know what I'm gonna try to get this thing running so anyhow let's take a look at it so yeah I got all the mice out I threw out the back the bottom of the back seat so yeah it's pretty rough Whew. even in the cold it stinks in here I'm gonna I'm just gonna rig up some buckets that I have temporarily. But yeah, all the, a lot of the wiring is bit up by the mice and uh, we'll see if we can get it going. The gas tank was out of the, it was actually sitting right here because it rotted away. So I got another one. So I got another one. Yeah, someone put floor pans in there, but has the folding rear seat, which is kind of cool. Tires, I'm gonna have to do something about them. And here's the engine here for 1960. They were all 80 horsepower engines, horizontally opposed six cylinder. Someone put the later 62 and up GM distributor. Uh, I did, the engine is loose, I did turn it. So, it's got this, uh, what I call the fan choke and all that. So, I think the generator's all right. So, we'll try it, we'll play with it. We'll see if we can get it going. Here, let's look up in the trunk real quick. Yeah, the metal is, a lot of the metal in this thing is okay but other places like where your foot goes it's paper thin let's take a look up front ah, if I get this key there we go ah there we go paper thin here so it appears pretty clean up here. There's the gas heater. Who knows what condition that's in it. There was a wasp nest here. So it blows air, makes combustion air, woo, and it heats, you know, woo, there's a blower and then it heats in down to your feet. Master cylinder, it's actually inside. This, your model, is kind of a bad one. Stuff is oak, you know, it's, it's borderline. Let's just say it's borderline but hey it's good enough if you can get it going around the road I think it'd be kind of fun so let's begin and see what we can do and see if we can get this thing at least run it check out check out the drivetrain and everything else all right first thing I want to do is get these door panels off because I got to pull the key out because I don't have a key for this so one way to make a key is to uh, get a locksmith to find, to match the key blank for the door and that'll probably be it, but I'm trying to get these damn things off and man, they are on there. What a struggle. Just to get these off, it's supposed to be easy and I bent the tool just trying to They packed this uh, backing so thick it won't come up against the back of this handle. Ah, almost had it. That's crooked. Let's see. 
See, it's supposed to fit in just like that. It kicks the thing out. But it's got to be just right. Now, I'll try it again. Come on, come on. Ah, there we go, maybe. Come on, it should be like this. Oh man, finally got the thing off of there. Now we gotta get the door handle. I'm surprised this thing, door handles I think were optional. It's getting dark and it's tomorrow's gonna be freezing so I wanna get some of this done. All right, I finally got that sucker out of there. What a pain that was, see? It's freezing out here now. It was nice earlier. I had to get the gloves on. Okay, I'm gonna show you this real quick under the so we're gonna start here uh, we're gonna start working with the fuel pump uh, a bunch of other stuff here you know wiring and all that but I want this thing to run under its own fuel pump so I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna see if it because if it's bad and you run it it's just gonna bust it open and then fuel gets into the crankcase. So let's do uh, fuel pump 101 real quick. All right, first thing we gotta do, uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm probably gonna have to take this shroud off because I did see that the mice have built a nest and on a Corvair engine, uh, you wanna get all that out of there because the intense heat and all that. So I'll, I'm gonna debate whether I do that. But anyway, uh, first thing I wanna do we're gonna get this uh, fuel pump off, and then uh, gonna knock two birds out with one stone on this video because I'm going to show you how to set up a spare. Uh, these you just got to be ready to take these off on the side of the road because they're not the best. But if you have a good one, they can last a long time. Uh, they used to have rebuild kits for these, which. Uh, were pretty good actually they uh, they work for me but I can't find them anymore they don't sell them so uh, let's see what's going on here jeez suckers on there the lock nut down here oh there it is I got it okay and this one doesn't have a, a bolt head on the end of the the nut which is kind of strange let's see I want to break these loose. Huh. I sprayed them the other day. Uh, let me put that 916 on here. Well, that's kind of rare. Came off without any problem. This one right here goes to the gas heater up front. I've rebuilt those things before. They're kind of very interesting devices. Really, uh, totally depends on the uh, combustion air more than anything. If you have good huh, sucker, can't get a grip on that one. It's too close. Looks like somebody tried to get this thing going remotely. Like I said, the thing that grounded this car uh, originally was the. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. The thing that grounded this car originally was the gas tank rotted out. And they just called me today and told me the, the key is ready. You know what the rarest piece, or the piece that's always missing on a 1960, that's 1960 only, is this little, right over here, there's a little lockdown holder for this fuel line, all the lines together. Uh, 9 sixteenths on here. Hold it still. Here we go. There, I got it. <laughs> Hopefully they didn't torque it down too tight gas heater return um, or feed oops let's try that ready 
perfect, easy. It's already. I just tried to grip them really good so they you don't round nothing off. And we'll try to pull this out. There we go, got it. So that thing probably hasn't been out of here. So that probably hasn't been out of here in 30, 40 years. Um, so we don't want to disturb that area because that goes right down to the oil sump. So we'll take this in and I'm going to put this box right here. Cover it up for now. Alright, so we got the fuel pump off of the 60. I want to dwell on this first because I want it to run under its own power. Uh, these original fuel pumps lasted seemingly forever, but when they sit for a while, the diaphragms get a little dry. Uh, the new fuel pumps have given the mechanical fuel pumps a bad name due to some construction issues. So we're going to look at that here on the bench. Uh, incidentally, this is this was my first 1960 uh, that I bought back in '93 and restored it. Drove it to several conventions and uh, visited family, you know, 50 plus thousand miles. I went to Dallas to Tucson a couple times in this car. Uh, up and down I-35, been a great car. Well, anyway, I sold it around 1999 or, or something and I bought it back. So I'll save that story for later. It'd be pretty interesting. All right, so basically um, here's a newer one. And this one I actually had several parts and I threw this together because I was taking a road trip and I wanted a spare one. I even put it together wrong. I just threw it together real quick just to keep the pieces together. But anyway, here's the 1960. Uh, first of all, let's open up this uh, seemingly new one. Uh, and by the way, it did have a tag with the correct AC part number, 4886, which uh, is kind of interesting, even though it doesn't say AC on the pump itself. There we go. So there's your, uh, a lot of people will cut these to lower the pressure, you know, to get it down to four PSI. So this actually is a good fuel pump. Uh, this seal here, uh, if they're rigid and uh, cracked, like this one here, if you can bend it and actually see uh, cracks in it, it's no good. So basically, a lot of people go to mechan or electrical electric fuel pumps and uh, so often you could pretty much ask everybody in your Corvair clubs or whatever, say, hey, send me your mechanical ones you don't want. End up with a bucket full of mechanical ones. And then between five or six of them, you can build yourself two really good lifetime mechanical fuel pumps. So basically what we have is this uh, valve body. So make sure that the valves are in there. And what I already did uh, I put sandpaper down on a, uh, a glass table flat and planed these two surfaces. So here's the problem. The Chinese ones uh, that everybody has trouble with, these surfaces are all rounded and uneven. And let's see here on the camera. You can get an idea of how I've resurfaced this. Okay, so basically what happens with these when they leak. The problem occurs when the fuel uh, fills up this little trough here because it can't go anywhere and then it backs up enough to where it fills this void. It doesn't belong anywhere in this area. So the pressure is just low enough to get fuel to go over this little uh, dike here into the crankcase that goes right through into the crankcase. So basically the fix is to drill a small little drain hole uh, here which coincides when you put it all back together it all coincides with this little notch. See that's what that's for. That's supposed to relieve fuel pressure and let it uh, oops am I in the camera? This notch right here is to relieve fuel pressure and let it drip out but it's too high so only in a severe case, if you see fuel coming out of this 
uh, hole right here, which is quite common. It's already too late. You filled up your crankcase with uh, fuel. So this little weep hole that I'm going to drill into here uh, relieves that. And then also, the other thing that you're looking for with your fuel pump parts, you're in good shape if all this is nice and pliable like that. So that's key. Okay, now let's look inside the, uh, the old 1961. Pretty much 5 8 and 9 16 and pretty much does all your Corvair stuff here. All right, so we got that off of here. Let's take apart this thing. Separate our other our good stuff over here. Incidentally, when I put that together, I'm going to drill out those. Another problem is the weak threads. So I'm going to drill out those uh, uh, threads on the, on the bottom of this pump. And then we'll actually bolt in some screws on there. All right, well, the spring pressure would normally by now split this sucker apart. My thumb screwdriver. Let's see. Pull that lid right off. There we go. Ooh, some water got in down in there and uh, weakened that spring. Look at that. Pretty darn uh, weak. Okay, but the... Uh, the diaphragm here actually looks pretty good. Actually, it looks better than that other one that I'm using. Let's pry this off of here. Yeah, this one actually looks, look at that, all the junk in here, man. Uh, you know what? There's stuff from mice in there, so the, the he sucked it up from whatever can he was using. Stuff on the bottom of the can ended up, and that's, that's the, it actually works as a filter because this is the angle that the pump sits. It's so all that garbage in there. Okay, let's pull this other half off of here. Yeah, that's even better. So actually this pump, I'm kind of impressed. Um, it does, yep, hold on, is that original AC? No, it doesn't have the AC name. I don't know, maybe this pump is from the 90s because um, the o-ring is not uh, flattened or anything it looks fairly new but all the rubber is in great shape so we're going to put all this in the parts washer and clean it up there's a little bit of uh, varnish in the bottom here uh, so we're going to clean this up and i'm going to resurface it uh, you can see it does need the resurfacing here if you look closely uh, it's very rounded especially on this area right here so that's kind of the telltale sign that uh, this is not one of the better made pumps but we'll fix that no problem all right so I drilled the little uh, drain hole here just now see the angle and uh, I'm not at my main my ho house garage that's where I keep all my good tools I sure wish I had a, a wire wheel here in my grinder but anyway you just need to get in here with like a 45 degree angle and uh, this is the bottom of the fuel pump so this is where again like I said before fuel can get down and leak into the crankcase now I, I found my fuel pump supply of uh, parts and here's another typical one it's amazing this these are both aluminum but this sucker weighs like half an ounce and this is like three ounces or four ounces but anyway this one doesn't even have uh, this guide here so any bit of fuel just gets down into the crankcase whereas at least here the heat can evaporate it off or get to the drain valve that's in in the upper half but anyway so we do have that emergency drain i just need to clean that out i i sanded this down on a glass table with that 220 grit sandpaper so i got all the high spots out of here and then this turned out really good you could see how nice and clean so this, these are the parts from the 1960 and I'm going to put it back together just the way it was. Now that i got clean surfaces, it should, should work no problem for that engine. Okay, it's, now it's time to get on this car. Yeah, I wasted the whole summer working on a bunch of other stuff. Well, 
other stuff's not out here. But uh, now we're gonna get to this. I wanna get this thing running finally. I finally put some tires on it that held air, except for this one here. Uh, but I'll fix that. But anyway, yeah, so here we go. We're gonna, ah, I forgot I had that in the dust cover. That's right. Uh, whew, what a mess, oh, what a mess. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm going to pull this top cover off, get the carbs off, and then hose this whole, th man, the dust. <laughs> I'm gonna hose this whole thing down and the engine does turn. Before you start any Corvair engine, you need to look at those air cooling areas, the jugs. So you gotta take the top cover off to really look in there and vacuum or clean it out with air because otherwise you'll ruin the engine, no airflow getting through there. Uh, I could start it just for a second, I suppose, but uh, I want to look in there. And if I'm doing a YouTube video, this is the right way to do it, so we're going to show you that. Uh, one other thing, I did get a used wiring harness. So this, here's the wiring harness. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the tunnel pan, let me see if we can see it. Yeah, that tunnel pan under here is going to come off. And we're going to see how much damage the mice have done. And I might have to replace that whole wiring harness, which I have. I mean, this is a total mess. I've never worked on anything so nasty before. But I think I can get it started. I just had a key made for that lock, for that ignition. And... Uh, yeah, the linkage is all frozen. The rust is pretty bad here. But if I clean it up, I think I can get everything free and made to work. This car is, uh, I've seen people save a lot worse of cars. This car is worth saving simply because of this number right here, that VIN number, 100475.5. This was the Kansas City plant in probably the first week of production. So it definitely is worth keeping. And that's what I intend to do is get it at least started for somebody else to take it from there. Cleaned up a little bit better. Okay, in case the other format doesn't work, I'm going to make a video, uh, a second one. I just made one. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is uh, I was just, before I clean this up and take it all apart, the top cover off that is, I just want to see if these carbs are any good. And anyway, I hooked up the pump here and uh, this one here, uh, the uh, floats were doing their job. They did stop the overflow in these 1960 carbs. You can see the vent, the di they didn't overflow there and it didn't, uh, bust out of the uh, venturi area um but the uh, on this one the pump does work the accelerator pump it's kind of dirty but it does work but the uh, throttle valve is completely stuck and i sprayed uh some uh solvent in there to try to get that loose but on the other side i just hooked up the uh, pump on this side which We'll do it again, just in case here. So the pump. So we're filling that carb, and yeah, that one is not overflowing at all via the ball vents, and we're and it's full because I'm seeing it, the seepage out of the uh, that wasn't there before, out of the nut here. But on this one. The accelerator pump is not even there really because you can't there's not even any uh, feedback or spring resistance or anything so it's either missing or dissolved it is a proper 1960 uh, carburetor though you can the, the telltale signs of course the linkage it's completely around so this can fit over it vents to the atmosphere in here 
there's no direct air heater so you could do that and of course it's got the original uh, Venturi cluster which you see there there's no uh, enrichment jets that came after 64 uh, so that's a, a 19 and there's no uh, uh, external choke mechanism that 61 used on these carburetors so that's 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 how you tell 1960 after 1960 they vented inside the carburetor on these bosses here uh, because the uh, ventilation for the heater came from the engine compartment so you couldn't have any fuel vapors in there so that's just a quick overview so yep I'm gonna blast this area with water and I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull the shrouding off just make sure nothing's clogged and then we'll see if we can get this engine running all right, so yeah, we tested the carburetors. We're just gonna pull them off anyway and put some kits in them, or I may just grab two other carburetors I have somewhere in there. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take that top cover off because I did discover uh, there was some rodents in there that packed up that engine, and I really don't wanna start it that way. So take a look for yourself. All right, we got just enough light here. So yeah, I pulled off this uh, uh, the spark plug, uh, wire that has the seal on it the airtight seal and look at that it is chock full of insulation and just all sorts of nasty stuff and we got mud dauber nests in the generator nests in the fan uh, i left my little scope at home but i could with a flashlight i could get in there and see so anyway let's move the camera over here so you can see first thing i like to do is get these spark plug wires off of here actually in this case let's get this 60 miles a little bit different we want to take off this uh, uh, choke intake fresh air mechanism and the linkage to the carburetors which we can do right now so I'm gonna leave these together here so we don't lose Makes it easier putting it all back together, actually. There we go. We got the choke mechanism here. Pull that one off. Make sure it don't go down into the fan. We got enough light. There we go. Cool. Got that loose. Whew, what a mess. Oh man, look at that. Stuff to go into your intake. Take this part of the linkage off so it doesn't fall down in the fan later. And we'll put it back at the same configuration type of thing. So now we can take off uh, this unit and the crossover. differences but uh, a few similarities okay next we pull the carbs off I can get the fuel lines uh, let's see what else do we got this uh, fan lifting mechanism uh, the crossover on the rear we get a 3 8 let's do that Yeah, let's go ahead and take this uh, cooling deal off. People are probably watching thinking, he waited all summer, now he finally gets to that thing out there. There we go, got that piece loose. Wow, the uh, little spring tension's working. Okay, we'll put that over there for now so we don't lose it. Okay, there's that deal. And there's a little, uh, oh wow, that goes for that little clip I was talking about. 
Yeah, this little spring you don't want to lose right there. Next. Okay, this deal we do have to screw off. And Clark sells all these little rubber parts there. Let's see, distributor cap. There's that one. So we can get these out of the way. Vacuum line, pull that off. Um, one of those S clips, those are kind of nice. In the 1960, if you got the proper, if you got the uh, proper spark plug wires, they go around this way. I do have an extra set for my old uh, 60 in there, my original 60. There. I just did that so I can leave the cap on and we can pull that vacuum line off. Next. Well, I might as well pull the distributor. Well, I'll leave the distributor on for now. Okay, next thing. <clears throat> oh, that was easy. Fuel pump. Okay, let's get these uh, fuel lines off the carbs and then we'll take the carburetor off. Next. Okay, next thing is, let's see, let's take the generator off. The most difficult part is those little itty bitty screws in the back. Uh, but let's get the uh, generator. So you need two 9 16ths down under here. Oh yeah, and you also have the oil cooler cover. We'll see how dirty that is there. Throw that down in there. Does that help? There we go. I've done it this way. I always use a uh, quarter inch drive. Okay, stick these screws up here for now. I keep them together. So there's carburetor number one. This is the one that's frozen up. Let's see, it's probably got gas in there. Yeah, it does. But it um, doesn't look too bad. Looks more like the butterfly valve is the problem. So we'll just let that sit upside down. And then you take the lids to these caps, you can stick them in there. That'll seal that off. No problem. Next. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get this one here. Normally you can't get that in there. You usually have to use a you have to use a quarter inch drive. Sure. Well, they had the uh, spacers in there. Uh huh. Oh, they're aluminum spacers. That's kind of cool. Nice little feature. Oh wow! Look at this. The. Uh, The jet is working, the, the pump, accelerator pump. Cool. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's on there. Uh oh, these might break. We're gonna have to. Of course, my battery's not too good. Man, that's on there. Let's, uh. I'm gonna tighten it. On it, but let's just do this. Sometimes this works. Where's my ratchet? Ratchet, ratchet, ratchet. Somewhere. All right, let's see if that works. Head. Uh oh. Bad news, it broke off. Well, well, well. We'll have to drill that one. But it wasn't going to come off anyway. Yeah. 
there's some nasty stuff in there years and years of uh, squirrels living in here man we'll fix it i'm not worried about it it's aluminum you can uh, get in there we'll just soak it down really good and then use an extractor at another time not gonna let that slow me down okay there's that We got that off. This is where you find your engine block number, which you can look at. So if you want to write this down, you get a pencil. It is um, T09177. That is the number right there or oh, I'm sorry it's a uh, T09 I is an indigo 7 Z is in Zener yep wow that one didn't break off A lot of times they break off back there. Next. Some hidden ones back here. Think back here, maybe. Oh, we got to get that off the ground. Oops, one. Clip on the bottom. All right, now this whole deal ought to hang on. Let's put that back. Let's do it this way. Nice wasps. All right, now we can get to that nut back there and I can, what is this? Oh, that's the uh, hot line there for the starter. Well, that makes it easier now. Look at this. Well, there's a lot of dirt. Jeez. All right, now I can get to that one. <clears throat> and a can of MP to help out. So that is That's the one I've been trying to get to right there. So we'll double soak that. And while that's soaking, then we'll get to the rest of these. Type of thing. Yeah, it's nice to just get this stuff done and over with. <laughs> Been looking at this car for a long time out here. Oh, let's look at that. Ooh, look at that. So yeah, that's gonna have to be cleaned out. Me and um petrified spider, if you can see. Well, there it is. I got that tube out of there. I think I damaged it, but it can be fixed somehow. Yeah, who knows? That's the choke heat riser. And I've never seen one stuck. 
like that where you could spin it and pull it up and down a half inch there's no clamp yeah it's just rusted in place down in the exhaust so this piece will have to be mended because that is an important piece there anyway so now we finally got the proper way Look at this. Oh my gosh. And that's why. And that's why you don't want to start it. If you're aware of this condition, man, that is pretty doggone bad I'm gonna get the shop back see what I can clean up oh man Woo. jeez man almighty all right let's start cleaning that out it's got to be done that is pretty bad spark plugs are in place some type of Bosch plug well maybe we can get some of that out uh, the the piston area though I don't think so 60 jugs are good jugs too you don't want to damage them well if anything the whole thing can always be taken apart jeez This is an early, early. And I only managed to strip two, two bolts, that one there, and I think one over here, that was it. And then of course, the one right back there on the aluminum. But we'll clean all that up and see. See how it fares, shot back time. Okay, now advance to another evening. And I've been just cleaning this out using a, it's actually a POR15 detergent that I bought. Uh, so I got the uh, oil cooler cleaned off. This stuff just gets right into the, the crap on the aluminum. But yeah, there's several different ecosystems growing in here. And unfortunately I didn't videotape it earlier but I got 90% out of this stuff, even in the uh, flex plate torque converter area in there. But uh, that extra 10% is what will prevent the car from cooling. But I think just to get it started, we're fine. Uh, I bet, so a combination of uh, running water through here, vacuuming out all the crud. Uh, I think I got it to where it could run for a few minutes at least without overheating, we'll, we'll know that when we get it started and I'm gonna pump some of this old motor oil out of here it's already short a quart maybe I pump another half quart and I'm gonna put some zero w20 in there at least there'll be some good lubricant uh, to flow rather than nothing at all so anyway that's what I'm gonna do and the next step is see if we can get it running but yeah I'm just uh, you can see there's some obstructions in there see the water doesn't drain that quickly it should just flow right down here it does and in this cavity in these cavities so yeah that detergent is working out pretty well so we'll take the shop back to this again and tomorrow hopefully hook up power put those carburetors on speaking of the carburetors let's uh let's go inside now and see where norm is on the carburetors all right i got these uh, carbs off of the 1960 and uh here's the one that had the uh, stuck uh throttle shaft and i worked on it very slowly and i got it loose but it's still binding in there uh so i'm gonna I pulled the throttle valve off, which it got damaged, but I got a spare. I always keep spares of these things. 
this one has the little modified uh, groove on there for idle. But anyway, this, uh, uh, I'm hoping I can get it to work more smoothly. This is loose, so you can, a lot of times you can uh, tap on those and stake them down. We'll see what I can do. Otherwise, I did grab, this is a late model one. It's in good shape, but at least for the purpose of getting this thing started, if I have to, uh, I'll just use this. But it's got the enrichment valve. Uh, but just to get it started, I think it'll work. Otherwise, I could pull that throttle shaft out of there. I've got a few of these laying around. So real quick, let's see what it looks like inside oh, here. Please. Oh, you know what? Get this off of here first. There, see. But yeah, this one, snap, this one is great. The other one. Uh, but the bad one, the pump worked. The one with the good throttle shaft, the pump didn't work. Maybe this whole thing was put together and never ran because the gas tank was bad. I still don't know if that starter works. We gotta try that out. Yeah, it looks, looks like new. There we go. Well, it's, it's fairly clean in there. Uh, it's pretty doggone clean. So we'll just wash that up a little bit. Let's look underneath the uh, Venturi. Well, I got lucky here. These uh, carburetors ended up being pretty darn clean. I think they were rebuilt and they just sat. Because uh, the guy didn't have any luck getting the tank fixed probably at the time. So it was just a matter of really just cleaning them up just a little bit and putting them back together. Not bad at all. Oh yeah, pretty much completely clean. There's a little bit of little debris down there on the lower surface. Yeah, it's not too bad. Still has some of its... Uh, brass uh bronze plating or whatever it is on there so we'll get all this stuff soaked and get them suckers back together tomorrow okay so i got that uh all freed up cleaned up and everything i got the other carburetor soaking i'm gonna get to that one in a minute but let's go outside and check this out i just wanted to hook a battery up real quick and see if the starter worked so I disconnected uh, the rest of the engine. All this stuff is frayed and screwed up from mice. But I just got one wire connected to that solenoid. And then the hot wire, which mice have eaten into. You gotta be real careful with that one. Ooh, I don't want it to short out there either. So anyway, and then I got my starter and then the ground. I got my uh, starter switch here. And watch this, yeah. Pretty much just look at the uh, flex plate here. See? Turns over very nicely. Who knows if the valves are sealing or not. It actually seems like a little bit too easy. Yeah. I got the engine as cleaned up as I think I'm gonna be able to get it. Oh, hang on a second. Let's look at the uh, fuel pump actuator. Might have to put the camera down. Well, let's try. Let's see. Should feel some spring in there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So I'll put this battery back on the charger. And we'll play with the spark and all that a little bit later. But first, I want to get those carbs on and the fuel system hooked back up. And the question is, do I put the generator and fan on or... I don't know. Well, we might as well because I gotta have that crossover for vacuum, so let's do it the right way. All right, let's get, we don't have a lot of time, so we'll get to it. All right, as you can see, I got everything kind of just basically cleaned up and ready to put back on to the Corvair. We're gonna see if we can get it running. I was able to get that starter to turn over, so I think I will. Uh, yeah, I got all the sheet metal and the linkage 
ready to put back on. I cleaned up that top cover. Uh, the carburetors are good to go. Everything's freed up. And uh, oops, there we go. You got it there. So these should squirt fuel no problem. Uh, everything's working properly for a 1960 carburetor. And uh, the only thing I got to do real quick is find a plug. The 1960 fuel pump, of course, fed the gas heater. So either I'll just change this real quick or put a plug in there. Uh, the generator I took apart. Let's take a look here. Uh, the generator, I just, there was wasps growing in here, so I took it apart. And, so it's smooth. I, I lubed it up so we have a pulley. And we'll get the linkage on. Like I said, I'm probably not going to put the air cleaner part on. Uh, so we'll hot wire it up so it'll start. And I managed to get a ton of junk out of here. I could even see light now. So it'll get minimum cooling, but it's just enough to get it going. All right, things are moving right along here. As you can see, I got everything. Got the carburetors hooked up. I haven't tightened the belt down yet. Um, I got to torque down these fuel lines and then finish the vacuum lines. Uh, I put the rear crossover on just loosely. And let's see, not that I think I really need it, but there is a vacuum line that goes to the, what do you call it? The vacuum modulator on the transmission. So let's get that done. Oops, that, the thing's shredding up, but that's enough to, yeah, that vacuum line's bad. It's all soft. What else do I got? I got the vacuum line here for the vacuum advance and I wanted to, uh, I just hooked this thing up so we can uh, check that advance first. And we'll pull the vacuum advance again right now. So that part is working. Uh, but we do need to let me, let's check the gap here. I need to put the nice thing about the Corvair, you can usually just pull the hose and get, I mean, pull the, the belt and get it to turn. So let's get it up on a lobe right there. Now there's somewhat of a gap. Let's see. Yeah, I see the gap there. Even where says, well, put a business card in there and adjust it that way. <laughs> I've never liked doing that because every time I've done the business card, you're checking on a dwell meter and the angle is much, much too large. So I start with my eye and then I, if I can't, uh, and then once I get my dwell meter, if I don't have my dwell meter on hand, my eye is better. And then I uh, uh, set it with a gauge, an actual gauge. So enough of that, small talk. Let's get the vacuum line and they have the distributor set up wrong they have the uh when you have it on top dead center with the number one uh piston here it should be pointing the distributor or the uh, rotor should be pointing right here towards the back of the car that's and they had it up one what that causes that causes you to get this set up wrong and of course you could you could get your uh, uh, spark plug wire sequence off too because they're only cut to, to be a certain length now i robbed some of these off a different car so they're not totally right uh, so anyway i'm gonna sh 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 tighten this back up Distributors always have an odd notch for screwdrivers. Not a conventional. I still have to test the electric. I don't even know if this thing is going to get spark or not. Let's see the vacuum line. Let's pull my stuff out of the way here. Get these screws out of the way. Okay, so the vacuum line will snake. Keep it away from the linkage. Goes to this carb. 
there. I put a plug on the other carb. The 1960s didn't have the choke pull off, so we don't have to worry about that. There is a little clip here for the vacuum line, which is kind of cool. Okay, so we got that. Uh, what's next? Oh yeah, this modulator valve vacuum. Throw all my vacuum hoses in one bag. So we'll just put this here for now. So we'll leave the distributor loose, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten that just a little bit. Yeah, we gotta add a couple of quarts of oil. So, because we're, we are below the ad line here, so just so you can see. Who knows what that... Probably no detergency in there. All right, I've got the uh, fuel lines tightened up. Uh, don't have any fuel in the system yet. Here is the battery. Let's see, we need the positive on this side. Get that other spark plug wire out of the way. All right, so we got yeah the fuel lines, uh, fuel pump tightened up. Uh, this is going to be our power for the coil. And right now the bowls are dry. Again, we don't know if there's spark, but we're going to find out in just one second. And then over here, so I got the uh, the fuel line hooked up to an old hose. Let's see which is the back here somewhere it was. So here is the fuel hose. And first of all, I'm going to fill this little bottle so that I can squirt fuel into the carb. See if I can just put a little bit in there. Yeah, that's probably enough to get some spark. All right, so pull this off. And that's monumental day here because this car has been sitting here for two years or maybe longer. And the landlord isn't convinced that I was going to get anything done with it. That car is never going to move. You're never going to touch that thing. He was starting to get mad. This place is looking like a junkyard. Well, he hasn't seen nothing yet. <laughs> but anyway... All right, so I'm going to squirt a little bit of fuel down there. And I got some rags here, so we're not using any, uh, I don't know if <clears throat> the regulator is any good, but the wiring is cut by mice, so I'm not gonna play with that. We're just gonna wire directly to the engine here. So, we got fuel down there. I'm going to put the camera back up here. Let's see if we can get this thing to start. Is the battery in there? Yeah. So first thing, pause. Oh, you know what? I need... You got to be careful of this too because there's some bare wire here. So we'll touch that. And then the ground for the body and the engine. Okay, now let me get my starter uh, button, which is right here. Oh shoot, I forgot, I gotta hook that up. Hang on, let me pull this off of here real quick. Man, the mice really did a number on these wires. I gotta reach down in there and hook this clip on. Work, duh, I should have done that. There, I clamped onto that purple wire.
power here. So we got this clamp here for 12 volts. All right. Now let's hook up this. Let's just make sure the engine cranks. There's no spark yet. I haven't plugged in the distributor. Cool, there you go. And we even have a light here. I don't know how that works. Um, okay, so now we got the coil. Oops, that goes on the uh, hot side. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Whoa, did you see that? Oh my gosh. It actually turned, oh. You know what, I forgot to fill it up with oil. All right, it's all, I mean, it's below. Let's turn off that coil so we don't burn it up. Man, oh man. Uh, we're gonna put this, what I got left of this uh, 30 weight Rotella and I got a little bit more in the... Try this, hang on. Let it sit for a second. Yeah, it still needs. You know, would you drain the oil and change it before you start it? Uh, my answer, an engine like this has been sitting forever, is no, because you want to run a flush or at least drain it, but you want the engine somewhat warm or you want the stuff in suspension. So when you do drain it, you get more out. Otherwise, you're just going to have to do it twice. So. Yeah, I'd rather have an engine like this that has some oil. You know, if the filter's clogged, it's, it'll just bypass it, so it's not a problem. This is this mystery oil I found here in this garage that I'm renting. It's uh, probably Dollar General stuff. I don't know. Probably very low detergent, but I'm just, just so there's some lubricant in there, it's probably no good. Okay, so we should have adequate lubricant in here. And uh, let's see. Yeah, it's up above the fill line, above the ad line. Let's try this again. Try to get those uh, balls to fill up. Okay, are you ready? Let's hook up the uh, coil and see what happens. Ready? Got the... spark yeah my battery ran out here on the camera so I just put another one in too all right so I got the fresh battery this one's smaller but I think this is a better battery the other one just never really worked anyway so let's uh, cross our fingers and see if we can get spark this time okay first of all let's make sure we got juice yeah much better all right all right here we go let's hook up the uh coil coil is connected all right you ready Let's move the uh, distributor down. All right, we just need some gas, I think. Oh, 
that was weird. Huh. Flywheel. Or, uh, teeth. Well, now we're on the right path. Cool, I am recording. <laughs> Didn't smell good. The exhaust sounded a little odd. Maybe there's something... You know, maybe there's something in the exhaust, a mouse nest or something. That could be a problem. Ooh. That's weird. I've never had that happen. We got fuel yet? No. Let's see, fuel pump is should be working. Make sure I got the line in the tank. Yeah, the line is in the tank. But we're dealing with very little fuel here, so. Let's try it again. <laughs> Plus, I don't have the, let's open up the uh, enrichment a little bit. Let's turn those idle screws up just a little bit too. The curb idle speed screw. Just to give it a little bit more air. There another turn and a half. Alright, let's try that. Okay, let's give it some more gas now. Oh, I forgot to turn on the coil. Okay, I think we got a timing issue. Let's do it again. That fan's gonna make a lot of noise. Solenoid keeps letting go. A little bit better. Okay. Let me use my other hand for this. Move the uh, timing up just a little bit. One, two. Okay, I'm hooking up an electric fuel pump just to see. Uh oh, don't tell me that line's too small. Oh no, it's not. Okay. Let's do this, electric fuel pump, and I got one wire, yeah, there, there, okay, what a mess, and I'm stuck on this thing, come on, come on, shoot, did I just, should have been pretty easy, you know, alright, here's the wires, all right, now we're gonna prime fuel system. Let's do this real quick and maybe check for leaks. Let's see, here's the positive wire, this one. Don't let that ground out. All right, let's try this for a second. Watch for pump, Morgan. Oops. Oh, no, that's not reversed. Hang on a second. Yeah, that's the positive. Am I in the tank? Yes, I'm in the tank. 
Okay, let's try it again. Okay, yeah, it's pumping now. There it goes. It's uh, pressurizing the system. And I'm hoping maybe uh, it just needed to be primed. That's kind of unusual. All right, let's try it now. Uh, that one's working. No. Let's try it again. We don't need to pour any more gas down because we have bowls full of gas apparently. Hopefully we don't have a fire. All right, let's give it a shot. Connect that. Nothing to interfere. Okay, here goes the coil. Okay, ready? Let's see if we can get this thing started. Okay, two things. We got it running, as you can see. I didn't have the fan on, so that's about as long as we want to run it. But also, this fuel pump is leaking like mad, so we know it's working. <laughs> now it is, it just had to be primed. Uh, but I need to find out why that's leaking. I didn't think I'd get it running. I was not sure at least. So that's a big step right there. Oh, let's disconnect the battery. Okay, nine sixteenths. torque this thing down secret with these Corvairs too is which I can't find I think it's in my other car uh, cut yourself some shorter 9 16 for the uh, makes it easier to get to the distributor and this bolt right here if you have to do it on the road or practice with it so you know what's involved usually late model fans don't the belts don't come off that rumor was these heavier fans from the inertia when it slowed down or you already had a bad uh, belt okay my battery is running down on the camera my second one now so let's try this one more time see if we have fuel you ready
Whew. Well, I'm, <laughs> that really is nice. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. Uh, that's all that junk now in those fins. It's going to smoke for a while, and we I'm going to have to fix this ASAP. I'm going to put my old one back on now, the proper one. And uh, it shouldn't be leaking. That's what just gets me because I, uh, I flattened all the surfaces. Well, this will be an experiment, a learning deal for that episode, another episode. So this, it, we got it hot, but oh, by the way, it was cooling because there was hot air coming out of the bottom. And uh, let's just take a look with a camera. Let me grab the light here. And I do have my... So basically down here on a 60 model, the air blows out of these ducts here. So you can see the smoke on the manifolds. Let's look in this side before the battery dies. And there's the bellows there. It's totally opened. See the bellows? But yeah, air was blowing through. It's a good thing I took that top cover off and uh, I ran the uh, my little cut hacksaw blade and cleaned the oil cooler as well. So let's check that oil level. Well, we still have some battery left here. Man, that smells nasty. Woo! Choking type smell. Yeah, there's still oil in there. Is it warm? Yeah. Ugh. Smells like some type of burning plastic or something. Ugh. That's that rat poop, I think. Well, we know the fuel pump is working though. I'm gonna pull that off, I guess, charge this battery. Let me let me put the other one on now and I'll, I'll film again. That way we can see if the other pump is gonna work at all now that the system is somewhat primed. All right, yeah, I've been driving this car today. I'm working on, at the same time doing this Corvair video, I'm doing my mileage test. And I can't put the car cover on, it's too dusty. So tomorrow, the last semi-warm day, that's going to get washed. So anyway, back here. <clears throat> All right, so I wanted to clarify a couple things. I did get it running. I switched out while this battery was charging. I put back on the one I purposely... The one that came from this car, I rebuilt it with some a new uh, a diaphragm that I had off of a better one. So this one is not leaking, but <clears throat> it also needed to be primed. I'm, I'm letting the engine cool down at the moment. We'll start it up in just a second. Uh, I want to add some more oil to maybe uh, get rid of some of that lifter noise. I'm going to put some lighter weight oil in there. But anyway, the, uh, uh, the other one was leaking, so we'll look at that. But this one's not leaking at all. Now, one thing I did want to say is if you've got a fuel pump that's leaking... You should assume it's also leaking inside the crankcase, so don't let it run long at all. Get it off of there. Um, this one here, though, it was clear it wasn't leaking in the crankcase. Because I actually put a weep hole to prevent that. It's right there. I'm going to make a video. I have another video I'm going to post about this. But uh, the weep hole um, prevents that. So there's something else going on with this one. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to open it up. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what it is. Uh, but anyway. So now it is working just fine. We've got the timing set. Uh, pretty darn close. And the pumps are working. The accelerator pumps are working. And I may just tie some wires to the regulator and to the battery. Bypass the car harness because it's missing a bunch. It's got all bitten up. It's not a good idea to run that anyway uh, I would like to see if that power glides working so tomorrow I may put the car higher up in the air and uh, And try it out Definitely don't want to do that now. I have sitting on some blocks So let's try it one more time. I Let it cool down. I just I couldn't wait to start it. My camera was still charging Oh, and I wanted to give a shout out just because uh, 
when I'm doing this video, I'm thinking of his format. Uh, shout out to uh, Uncle Tony's Garage. So uh, that guy, he has a really good YouTube channel, good sense of humor, interesting stuff all the time. Uh, I love watching his videos. I think of all these car type videos. <laughs> his approach is the best any any comments on stuff that he sees out there i think that's it's really good yeah check it out if you have it <laughs> oh i'm going to put that oil in there real quick so i've got some rotilla 1030 i'm just going to put a quart in here so we got the uh diesel stuff and then I'll drain this oil out of here after a while, but I do need to order some more uh, oil filters. I thought I had a few. There, that's about enough. <clears throat> Better put the lid on, because it will fall over. All right, now let's see what we got. Okay, should have done that in the first place. All right, let's put the ground back on. Spark there, you could, you can hear something going on in here when I do that. Okay, ready? Oops. of the oil cooler. Okay, that's enough. <clears throat> I don't want those heads to stay that hot for too long. And uh, with the uh, temperature deal there, I was pointing it at the uh, the ridges of the head, the cooling fins. <clears throat> because of the junk in here, it's probably only half as efficient as it ought to be. So I don't want to uh, toast it, of course, but I did want to get that oil uh, to temperature and mixed around So I'm gonna try this again tomorrow until maybe I can maybe get some of those lifters to quiet down But the the main thing is you know really The best thing you would do if you're in this situation right now, and you want to uh, drive this car I Would pull the engine apart and just completely clean everything out and put it all back together. It's not that tough So you'd want to pull the heads off and have them clean because all that stuff is wedged down in those fins Maybe you don't even have to do that. So you can tell this engine actually does not run bad at all. Uh, there's, sounds like just one lifter now. There were several before. And I, I put a little lower viscosity in just to clean stuff out here. And uh, it is flowing air. As you hear is this belt in the, uh, the fan here. But yeah, I got the timing right at 12 or 13, right around there, the dwell at 32. And uh, I got the idle, it's a little bit high because these uh, throttle valves are the loop, the uh, what do you call it, the beam down here is not. Worn, so it's hard to get them uh, accurately set. 
synchronized, but as you can see here, It says it should. Let's step back here for a second. The nice thing about Corvairs in the garage, not trying to be funny, is as you work on them and you got them running, uh, you got a source of heat at your, at your legs. So the heat goes up through your pants leg and it keeps you warm while you work on them if you, if you, if you got it running. So anyway, I'm going to jack up the back tires. I'm going to put up on jack stands real quick. Uh, to see if the transmission uh, is working. So let's do that here. All right, I threw some jack stands under here really fast. All right, let's uh, start it back up here. I don't even know, maybe those brakes work, an emergency brake. Uh, here we go. All right, connect the coil. All right, let's see if we can get started. All right, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. It is free. All right, let's see if I should sit in it. Yeah, here, I'll just do this. It's in neutral now. Let's, let's put it in drive. Oh, the wheel started moving. Uh, hold on. Maybe the cable's not neutral. Hang on, something funny here. Ah, steering wheel made. Uh, why did it go down another notch? Oh, okay, drive, yeah, okay. Hey, let's give it some gas here, maybe. Oh, there it goes. fluids in the differential. Let's look at the other side. Yeah, you can hear that band grab and engage. So the transmission uh, is working properly. Watch. Let's try reverse. Actually, I want to try low one or low. Let's try uh, reverse. Let me let me see if it stops when I put it. There's neutral. Okay, it stopped. And is that reverse? Yeah. Right there. Should go the other way. Well, oh, almost all the lifter noise is almost gone. There it goes. Reverse. The reverse is working, so that's good news. Hey, back in neutral. 
just got to do some wiring work and, and the brakes or something, you know. Maybe some temporary line. Possibly, I don't know. So there you have it. We have a powertrain that's fully functional. Uh, 1960 car sat. I had it maybe two or three years sitting here and uh, didn't know what I was going to do. And I thought, hey, let's let's just see if we can get it going. And sure enough, uh, minus a wiring harness and brakes, I just uh, you know the brakes are dead. Nothing there. So. Of course, the, the tunnel pan needs to come off because everything in there is frozen. But again, it's still worth keeping because this is number whoops, 475. First week of production. And the nice thing, those there's no rust, there's no structural rust in the, the main unibody uh, areas, the torque areas of the car. You know. All right, I'm gonna call it a night. This is total success. The car that would have probably got crushed is gonna live on.